Uh, good morning to you all. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank our Dutch colleagues for being here with us today to talk about the, 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 the Netherlands. Um, but before I pass the floor to them, I would like to go over some brief rules we should be following during this session so that everything uh, runs as efficient as possible. So today with us we have um, Kim, who will be our spoken person, uh, and Eric and Peter, and also a Portuguese um, citizen that is working in the Netherlands since uh, Francisco Sá, who will give his testimony in the end. Um, so about the rules. Um, we have estimated that this session will take about one hour, uh, where there will be time for questions and answers in the end. So uh, let me change this. So what we would ask of you is to, um, uh, because we want to give you the best, uh, the best experience possible, we don't want anything to distract you. We, we kept uh, your cameras and your microphones off so only the speaker has the camera on and the microphone. Um, and this will be like this during all the presentation to avoid any undesired noises. In the end, uh, after the presentation and the testimonial, you will be able to put your questions by raising your hands or using the chat and uh, that you can also use during the presentation. And we will try to answer them as best as possible. Um, when it's your time, you will be asked to turn off your microphone and camera if you want to and talk to us live. Um, in the meantime, while the presentation is taking place, there will be several Dutch and Portuguese areas advisors in the chat willing to answer your questions as well. So feel free to use it and participate and share your questions, share your doubts, and we will try to help you as best as possible. These are the rules for this morning. Uh, but before I pass the floor to the Dutch colleagues, I would like to go briefly through um, some information about Iris, because Iris is the reason why we are uh, gathered it here today. Uh, so ARIS stands for European Employment Services, and our mission is to facilitate the free movement of workers within the European Union and also the European Economic Area. And this includes the 27 member states and also Norway, Iceland, Liechtenstein and Switzerland. Our services um, are provided both by, uh, to job seekers and employers. Uh, whether it's information, it can be advice or support to recruitment. And uh, in order to provide those services, we have a network of areas advisors. They are experts in mobility. Uh, we have around 35 areas advisors in Portugal spread over the country. But all over Europe, you have 1000 areas advisors ready to support you in your career move. Uh, we also have um, uh, the ERES portal where you can find on a daily basis more than 3 million job vacancies available in all sorts of occupations. You just have to be patient and look for it. Uh, there is also an online platform where we organized uh, recruitment events. It's called the European Job Days. We also have uh, um, ERES advisors available to talk with you on the chat on Fridays. And of course, on social media, you can follow all our activities that we have planned for the near future. This is a very brief presentation about the years. I advise you to look for it, try making some research to understand what kind of services we can provide. It's a very competent network. So again, thank you all for being here. And without further delay, I pass the floor to Kim for the presentation about the Netherlands. The floor is yours. Thank you, Eric, for sharing. Is that, do you hear me? Yes. OK, then it's OK. Then Portugal and the Netherlands, welcome to everybody. Did you know that both countries have bilateral diplomatic relationships for more than 350 years? And at this moment, there are about 30,000 Portuguese nationals are living in the Netherlands. 
My name is Kim Smits and I am a Euros advisor from the Netherlands. And today there are some colleagues from Portugal, as you can hear, and also some colleagues from the Netherlands present in this webinar. Uh, when I can go to sheet two, uh, Eric, then I uh, will show you. Welcome everyone, my colleague Eric, he will help me with sharing the PowerPoints today. And when, when there are questions today after this webinar, it's possible to mail us and we can get in touch. Uh, but of course, also the Eurus team from Portugal is available for questions and comments. And during the webinar, you can put your questions in the chat. It's very easy for us when you talk English then, because my Portuguese is not very good. I know Bom Dia and I just used it. Then I want to go to the next sheet because there's the agenda for today. <clears throat> I'm going to tell you something more about the Netherlands. Uh, what's our culture, but also what's our business culture? I think that's very important for you. I'm going to tell you some things about housing in the Netherlands, about wages and holidays, but also cost of living. And of course, the Dutch labor market, what, what are the opportunities? What are the vacancies in the Netherlands? And then uh, Last but definitely not least, um, I will um, introduce you to Francisco Sa. He's um, a very nice gentleman from Portugal and he's going to tell you about his relocation to the Netherlands last April. So uh, then I want to start with a video impression about working and living in the Netherlands. And um, here, is, here it comes and I think you will see then a bit more about the Netherlands. Mis nog even het geluid. Even een sound. I'm not sure you, when het geluid you wat je helemaal aan het begin moet doen. Met starten moet je dat aangeven. Erik will try to uh, fix the. Yeah, I think you have to choose the sound first. There's a tip in the chat, uh, Eric. When you share the video, you have you can choose also for sound. I I would advise you to stop sharing and then start sharing again with yes. sound. Clicking on the sound button. Yeah. I'm sorry for this. Next time we meet in person. Yeah, yeah but show uh, you the video. it's normal. <laughs> Waar moet ik nu het geluid uh, omhoog zetten? You have an Where option. Can I yeah. Put up you have the a, value. Uh, on the on the top. On the top. In the three dots, I believe it's not, uh, Susanna. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's not can. in the three dots. It's when you share. You need yeah. to click on the option to put sound. So I stop and mm -hmm. you start I with start. the video. Yeah. So and then where? Wish you share and on the top of everything when you when it says share content, I don't know how to, how to say it in Dutch. There's a button to include sound from the computer. It's on the top before choosing the channel or the screen. Uh, I don't see it. Do you see it, Kim? Oh, I can see it because you oh. are sharing. Yeah. I Do don't we see have it. access to that? Um, and Anna Paula, did you put that this video on the OneDrive? No, we we have one only in the PowerPoint. But but let me see. Oh, let me. Yes, I got it. Yeah. You got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna share. And you share. You click on the button yeah. first, and then you choose the screen. Yeah. Yeah. But there's still no sound. 
there's no video. You are not sharing. Still oh, not. sorry. You are not sharing. <laughs> Uh, even kijken waar zit ik dan. So now I'm sharing. Yes. Yes. All right. Let's put this back. Is there sound? No. No, no. No. Not yet. Uh, Can I try? Yes. Okay. So stop share it, uh, Eric. Yes. I'm sorry. It's fine. It happened. <laughs> so I I stopped. Yeah. Do you see my screen? Yes. Full screen, please, Susanna. Yeah, oh. I'm trying. Oh, it stopped when I put full screen. Is it still working? There's no sound. And now. Yeah. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. I find Holland a very beautiful place. Calm. A lot of green. Credo sia una, una nazione dove poter costruire un futuro. It's very dynamic and it's, it's very open-minded. Dutch people are really curious about other cultures. Everything is more free. Also the position of the country helps a lot. It has an international airport that you can fly wherever you want very easily. And the fact that the 99% of the people here speak English and you have no problem. Yeah, you can really build great relationship with people. I always think of Holland as being one step ahead. There's a lot of technical development, it's particularly for electrical engineering. What I like also is the balance between working hours and private life. Perché ok, il lavoro sia importante, ma la vita fuori è altrettanto importante. I think here they really care about people. People are not judging you by ranks, but by your performance. It's kind of a small family, and that's why everybody is really working tightly together. I think the Netherlands is a place where you can grow professionally. I want to do a specialty here in the nursing field and uh, Holland offers me this kind of opportunity. The Dutch environment is very, very well defined and relaxed. People should come to Holland to discover more opportunities to beat challenges. Do you want to work and live in the Netherlands mm. like us? Please, look at the following 10 steps to succeed. Start at the Eures portal, the website to find all information about working in the Netherlands and other European countries. Register on the website for full access and to create a personal profile. Browse through the Eures portal in your language 
and for more questions, contact a local Eurys advisor. You find them on the portal as well. Once registered, you can start looking for vacancies. The portal provides guides and your local advisor can help you too. Mm -hmm. Complete your profile to ensure the Eurys matching tool connects you to the right vacancies. When you've found the job of your dreams, consult a Eurys advisor in the Netherlands. Start the job application procedure. You got the job. It's time to move to the Netherlands. There, you'll need to arrange all the formalities, like registrations and insurances. Oh! Your Euro's advisor is happy to help you. Mm -hmm. Finally, you start the job. Mm. Good luck! Thank you for watching our video. Uh, now we are going to go back to the presentation because I want to tell you something more about the Dutch Eurus team. Uh, we have a team also uh, in the Netherlands and because we have cross-border uh, with Germany and with Belgium, we do a lot of business with those two countries and uh, we have also cross-border colleagues. They, um, they only... Um, uh, help people who want to live in the other country, but the people, uh, sorry, want to work, but the people are going to live in the country where they are now. Uh, me and my colleague Eric, here you see our, our whole uh, Euros team. We get together once a year and uh, then we set agendas for the next year because also from out the Netherlands, we want to have a lot of um, yeah, labor uh, movements in, in all of Europe, not only to the Netherlands, but also from the Netherlands to other countries. Um, to get back um, at um, Eric and me, we are from the transnational team. Uh, yeah, you can go to the other slide. Uh, this is where you can see it very obviously. We have Euros the Netherlands, and then we have our transnational services, and we have our cross-border services and uh, service to employers and job seekers, because we are talking to job seekers and to employers, of course. And then you see our names also, Kim Smits and Eric Boon. Then we can go to the next uh, sheet, because I want to tell you some facts about the Netherlands, because we are not a very big country. We have uh, something more than 41,000 square kilometers of land. And when you know Portugal has more than 90,000, you know we're only a, maybe a bit small, uh, small country. Um, uh, then you see that we have all, almost 18 million inhabitants and there are a very, uh, very um, many people living in the Randstad. And Randstad is an area in the Netherlands uh, with the three big cities, The Hague, Rotterdam and Amsterdam. Um, most people know that city. And in that area, more than 1,000 inhabitants uh, are per square kilometer. When you're going to the north of the Netherlands or to the south, there is a lot of more room. And uh, you see also the open fields. Uh, I told you already we have borders with Germany and Belgium. And I think... A nice thing to know, we have more bikes than people in the Netherlands because we have 1.3 bike per person, uh, 23 million bikes um, there are in this country and uh, tourists often rent a bike to see um, the things you have to see in our country. We are the sixth largest economy in the European Union and the 17th lar largest economy in the world. So you can go to the next sheet. Because there you see some pictures. Of course, the tulip fields, they are really Dutch and the canals with bikes are typically Dutch. Uh, for example, in Amsterdam, the second uh, photograph is what you see there a lot in, in, a, in many streets. Um, then our wind, windmills, they are very famous. And this old fashioned one you see here, uh, that we have still thousand in our country. And, um, they are um, sawing wood or they crush grain uh, in the past. Um, and the modern ones you see at the right, they are gaining energy. And that's uh, a big 
uh, sector for the Netherlands. In the middle, you see a picture of a DJ, and that was not for nothing, because we have a few very famous DJs in the Netherlands. Think about Chesto, Martin Garrix, or Armin van Buren. Then the next page, how to cope with a Dutchman, because when you have to cope with a Dutchman, maybe in the beginning you are in doubt, because are they now rude or are they open and direct? The Dutchman likes to see himself as honest and open. They are often very incommunicating and some people from abroad are thinking they always seem to know better. The average Dutchman has every hour planned. So when you want to bring a visit, you have to make a call. Of course, um, there are always exceptions and uh, some people don't do this unwritten rules in the Netherlands anymore. I think Dutch people can say as very individual people, but there's one exception. When we have, when we can celebrate something, you see it on the picture. I think it's a picture from our King's Day or when we were in the football, uh, in the uh, when we are playing with our national team. Then everybody is in uh, the national color orange, and uh, when we can celebrate together, then the individuality is is gone already. Um, our children in King's Day, because that's a celebration of the birthday of our king, Willem Alexander. At that day, our children uh, can uh, sell their stuff on the streets. It's no problem. And then everywhere you can look, you see little garage sales. And something about the three kisses, because when we meet, we give three kisses, one at the one cheek and two at the other cheek. And uh, it's a bit strange, strange, maybe a bit confusing, but because even the Belgian people only do one kiss. But uh, you will get used to it when you're here because you can't get away. We give three kisses. Uh, then something about traffic in the Netherlands. It's, it's versatile. Uh, many people ride a bike, of course. But, but we also have a good public transport. Think about trams and trains and buses. And then we have uh, a road network. It's one of the best and modern in, in, in Europe. And um, but we still have traffic jams. So <laughs> it's very busy here in the Netherlands also. And then I made a mark about sports because sports is a big thing in the Netherlands. Um, most Dutch people have their own sport. But we also look a lot at it on the television. Uh, a big name from the Netherlands is, of course, Johan Cruijff, the big football player. But nowadays, everyone talks about Max Verstappen, of course. Then the last topic at this sheet, the weather. Uh, that's a bit sensitive in the Netherlands because everyone talks about it every day. How's the weather? When it's going to rain? When it's not going to rain, more important. And uh, last summer was very good here. Um, we have a, normally we have four seasons, but now we have we had a very lot and hot, long and hot summer. Um, but normally we also experience snow in the winter, and when it's freezing, many Dutch people go skating on the creeks and fans all over the country. So I want to go to the next sheet because then uh, there's more about the business culture, because I think that's interesting for you to know also. Uh, the Dutch business culture, it's very flexible, it's open, and in comparison with other countries, it's less regard for authority. It's quite informal and direct, and in the most companies, we uh, have a first name basis. But what you have to know when there are meetings and discussions, it's it's at fixed times, it's very punctual. There are protocols and we set agendas. And when we talk with each other in a meeting, then all members are expected to contrib contribute. When you go in negotiation with a Dutchman, uh, you shall see they are straight to the point, in general, of course. They're forceful, maybe a bit stubborn, and they're tough negotiators. Uh, honesty and reliability is number one in every business context you have. Very important in the Netherlands, be on time and never make a promise you cannot keep. It's very Dutch. So we go to the next sheet and then you can see a little bit more because <clears throat> when I um, made some equations, when you compare things to, to other cultures, there's really a low power distance. There is 
what, what I said to you earlier, there's less hierarchy and equals people are equals regardless of formal positions. Uh, so uh, people, uh, colleagues, they know each other sometimes also private. Um, and it's very important that you have uh, good well-being and relationships has to be good. And um, the quality of life is very important. We do not live to work, but we like to work to live. And something about the individualism. Um, we focus very on the individual. Uh, personal achievements are very important, but we also stand up for immediate family and for our colleagues. So then I want to show you the next sheet. That's uh, something about the CV, because maybe it's a bit different uh, than what you used to in Portugal. We use an anti chronicle a CV, and uh, so you start always with your latest job, so the employer can see your last experience right away. And we use a picture. It's very normal to have a picture on your CV so that people can have a feeling with you. Of course, not <laughs> your appearance is important, but what you can do, but it will help you to, to get a click to get together. And um, sometimes I, I also write it here, a photo is better than words. Uh, then it's important to always adjust to the vacancy. So think about what I'm going to react and is it, um, can I see it back in, in your CV? Never uh, more than two pages because that's long enough. And you don't have to add diplomas or passport or, or, or certificates or, or whatever, because you talk about it later. And then something maybe it's a bit different because I understand salary is very important for everyone, uh, but we don't talk about it in the first um, get together with each other in the first interview. Then motivation, that's what we talk about. And then it's more easy to talk about salary at the end. So that's a little tip from the Netherlands. <laughs> then something about housing, because I think you have questions about that too. I said earlier, it's a bit challenging to find a good house in the Netherlands. And that's also the reason why we talk with our employers, with our Dutch employers, about the possibility of offering housing or helping new employers. And nowadays there are uh, employers who offer housing with a job. So that's, I think that's good because then it's one problem less for you when you are coming to the Netherlands. We have uh, a big base of own be owned houses in the Netherlands. As you can see, 56%. But we have also social rental corporations. But that's not very interesting for job seekers from abroad because people from the Netherlands are on waiting list for 10 years or longer. So that's a bit difficult, uh, but we have also commercial rental, of course. And um, like I said, uh, a good employer is going to help you with this or he's going to offer it. I had some prices on this sheet, but they are really indicate indications based on apartments in large cities, because when you are in another part of the Netherlands, the rental is maybe a bit lower. Uh, so it, it's a good thing to, to uh, to very uh, think of uh, you you have to think about it when you have your salary what's what's my rental and what are the costs in the, in the Netherlands as you can see we have also the problems with energy and water and it's still getting more expensive uh, so it's good to think about it before you accept a job then I want to go to the next uh, page because that's about wages and holidays um, we have a minimum wage in the Netherlands but it's not very often used. It's 1750 a month and it's a gross wage. So you have to pay a little tax also after you receive this. I put put here some vocational um, salaries. Uh, normally people earn between 2000 and 3500 uh, a month. But when you know uh, 1000 is the average rental, you have to think about, is it good for me to go? And yeah, we can talk about it uh, in, uh, in our, our Euros team or as an Euros advisor, we will advise you in that. When you have a bachelor degree, uh, average wage is 3000 to 4500 And when you have a master degree, it's a bit higher. Uh, when you put on the button, Eric, you see a lot, a bit more information. 
because I add something about holidays. We have normal holidays. It's uh, 25 um, for, for a whole year. So you can pick up four or five weeks a year. And uh, we have also six national holidays. Then you can think about Eastern um, or maybe uh, Christmas or, or King, King's Day, which I talked about earlier. Sometimes uh, employers give you something more for goods. Um, yeah, they want to do something extra for them for their employers, and you can read it in your contract. Then we have also a, a big happy month in the Netherlands. That's the month May because most of the companies will pay then the annual uh, extra salary, and that's uh, our holiday money. Uh, so in that month, it's uh, starting the good weather, and people uh, have something extras on their paychecks. Then I want to go to the next sheet because there I have something uh, for you uh, about cost and living. Um, you see, when you want to have a good meal at home, you have to think about eight euros per person a day. When you go and eat outside in a normal average restaurant, you have to think about 30 euros for two for two course. And um, gas is rising, so I set it a bit higher than last year. Uh, 60, 75, it's, it's normal for a small apartment a month. And then we have also the growth of electricity costs uh, per person. I said it here, 40 euros a month. It's always an average. And the rent, 1,000 average also. Then a cup of coffee in a bar or in a, in a, in a restaurant, it's 3 euros, the same as a glass of beer. And when you want to go to the movies or something, you have to think about 11 euros per person. But you can see at, at the link, you, you will receive also this information and then you can compare for yourself what are the prices in which city also. So I want to go to the next page. Because here you see a very red uh, Dutch map. It's getting more red every month. We have a lot of shortages in the Netherlands and vacancies. Uh, we, uh, as a Euros advisor, we know that because we talk with uh, employers every day. When you set on a button, uh, Eric, you will see what it's now. Uh, in April 22, they, we have 3.2% uh, per unemployment rate and in June 22 is the next page. You can see how many vacancies we have in the Netherlands. That's almost 470,000 open vacancies, and it was uh, last June. So it's still uh, uh, very um, yeah, difficult for employers to find good people because there are so many open vacancies. When you go to the next sheet, then I will show you where do we have the most opportunities because there are so many opportunities and we like to customize for you. Uh, when you are looking for a job, we want to talk with you. What, what are you looking? Because it's the other way around now. There are so many employers are looking for employers that you're in charge as, as a job seeker. But as you can see, we have very much very many opportunities in tourism think about uh, housekeeping but waiters bartenders cooks and it's for me it's a sometimes it's a bit we see much opportunities with with housing because the hotel uh, sometimes it's easier to to offer some housing for for the people who wants to work there there but also in other sectors in healthcare are we looking for nurses for caregivers there are a lot of opportunities and we have a special project for agricultural uh, sector uh, so that people from abroad can come to the Netherlands. Also a lot with housing. So uh, there are good um, agreements for the people who want to come to the Netherlands. Then the next page, you will see something more because like uh, marketing and communication and business development. I received some questions before of this webinar. And people ask me also, uh, are, are, are you also recruiting for areas of television or do you uh, recruiting for cultural areas? Of course, we are also looking for that opportunities and there are. 
sometimes in the cultural sector, the Dutch language is more important. Uh, there are a lot of sectors where uh, English is enough, but sometimes you have to speak or you have to learn Dutch. But um, we can talk about it uh, face to face when you have uh, when you have a customized question about that. <clears throat> Then I want to go to the next sheet because that's a thing. Maybe in the Netherlands, it's a bit different um, when I compare it to other countries. We have a very flexible labor market and it's very normal in the Netherlands to start for a temporary agency to get to know the company. You will receive a, a contract for six months or something, maybe longer. But uh, our temporary agencies are very big and they have their own collective employment agreements. It's trustworthy, it's very trustworthy, but I can understand doubts when you do not know this. Uh, the company can be a member of the ABU or MBBU, and I've got a little film to show you that. I hope it's possible to uh, show it. Uh, so Eric, the floor is yours. <laughs> I think there is no sound again. No. Uh, it's a, it's the same problem with the video, I, I yeah. believe. Yeah. Perhaps you let me see the link I sent you, Susanna. Uh, it's the last video, so. I hope we can show it because it's very short, but I think it's very important information for, for people because it's, it's really about the temp agencies and that's a lot in the Netherlands. You you have there, Susanna? No, it's uh, in each slide. Oh, no, I, did sent, you put the I sent you already. Sorry. I sent you already, uh, Susanna. On, where, where? Uh, through Teams, Teams. Mm. In, in the other uh, conversation, can you see? No. Yeah, in the other. Mm. Ah, here it is. Yeah. Yes. It was taking its time to show. Okay. Let's try sharing. Do you see it? Is it okay? Not yet. Oh, it's it says yeah. um, yes. Advertisement first. Sorry. <laughs> Is it working? Well, it's the wrong movie. It's the wrong one? It's the first one. Oh, I see. I find Holland very... So this is the first one, Anna. We need the second one. Let's see if I can find it. Oh, we are, we are sorry about this. The, yeah, um, is technical, it, uh, technical, don't, yeah, this, this was the, the first one, sorry. Yeah. Let me Let's see. See, I have the presentation open. Let me see what number of slide is it? What number Can of you... slide, Kim? It's slide 20. Yeah. 20. Yes, I can see it. I, I have it. Uh, no. I have it. So copy and then past. Okay. See? it opens and now I can share again hopefully the screen
Welcome to the Dutch labor market. As a European citizen, okay? you are allowed to work in the European Union. However, each country has different regulations concerning employment contracts. For instance, many people in the Netherlands work with a temporary employment contract. Some of them, including many people from other countries, work through private employment agencies. This is how temporary employment works in the Netherlands. A company searches for staff through a private employment agency. The agency searches for the right people who are able and willing to carry out the work. As a private employment agency worker, you are not employed by the company, but by the agency instead. The agency is responsible for paying your wages correctly and on time. The company that you work for is responsible for your supervision and safety at the workplace. Please prepare properly if you are thinking about traveling to the Netherlands for work. Are you familiar with Dutch society? Where will you live and what will it cost? Which insurances should you have? And who can help you with this? Try to compare the costs with those in your own country. Have you been offered a contract by a private employment agency? Only sign if you fully understand the contract and are aware of how much you will earn and how many hours you will work. The majority of private employment agencies are well organized and are SNA registered. But always remember to check who you are signing a contract with. Paying recruitment fees is forbidden in the Netherlands. Don't do it. In short, good preparation will allow you to work without any issues in the Netherlands. Welcome to the Dutch labor market. That's it. Oi. Yes, there we are again. Yeah. Thank you for watching this because it's very important information. Yes, and it was. Now, Thank you. Now I have some important sites for you uh, and, and you will receive this PowerPoint so that you can look it up and look it back. Because um, do you have any doubts uh, for working for a temporary agency? You can read about it on the sites. And also I add the compare cost of living because I think it's important too. Uh, and the mailbox from our Euro Dutch Eurist team. And I will set it also in the chat. Because now it's time for the most important person of today. It's Francesco. Uh, we will, he will tell you all about his experience with working in the Netherlands and his relocation because he moved uh, last April to the Netherlands. Then he has a job in the south of, of, of our country. Of course, his English is perfect. Uh, I know it because I talked with him. But today he will meet you in your own language. Uh, when you have questions, please think about the English language uh, after his presentation because we can also follow that in the Netherlands. Uh, Francesco, the floor is yours. Well, at first I would like to thank uh, Atheores, Kim and Peter for the opportunity. Uh, muito bom dia a todos. Meu nome é Francisco Sá e vou partilhar um pouco da minha vivência, da minha curta vivência para já, sete meses nos Países Baixos. Portanto, quem sou? Sou engenheiro agrónomo, 24 anos, natural da Trofa, Porto, e o porquê da escolha dos Países Baixos. Em primeiro, em primeiro lugar é o facto da qualidade de vida, uh, se compararmos trabalho e, uh, e vida, acho que, que uh, a Holanda tem muito bons índices. Uh, a segunda questão é o facto de, profissionalmente, é o melhor país para eu me desenvolver, tanto no, no setor agrícola, produção, melhoramento genético, breeding. Uh, o facto de grande parte da população falar inglês, que é mesmo assim, 90% das pessoas falam muito bom inglês. Então, como aconteceu? Uh, tal como, como aqui me referiu, uh, eu comecei a entrar em contato com a, com a plataforma por volta do início de 2022. Uh, conheci o Peter, uh, penso eu, em fevereiro. Após alguns percalços, acabei por encontrar a minha primeira empresa, Linders, a uh, trabalhar como um funcionário de Viveiro, totalmente normal. E essas duas pessoas que, que aqui estão, que é o Yaron e o Tim, tenho muito a agradecer porque, de facto, me ajudaram com demasiadas questões, nomeadamente, no início eu estava a viver numa pensão 
e eles, uh, por tempo determinado, facilitaram uma casa deles, uh, emprestaram uma bicicleta e uh, tiveram muita, muita paciência. Uh, após algum tempo, comecei a trabalhar em part-time em diversas empresas. Uh, neste momento, estou a dividir o meu tempo entre a Compass Agro e a Frank Fundas. A Compass Agro é uma empresa de, de prestação de serviços, ou seja, faz quase como se fosse um aconselhamento às empresas agrícolas. Estou a desenvolver projetos, e, portanto, estou na parte de, 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 da pesquisa, na parte de desenvolvimento. E o Frank Kunders é um dos maiores produtores de rosa de, do país e um dos maiores produtores de rosa de, da Europa. E, de facto, tem uma equipa brutal. Uh, também pelo meio trabalhei noutra empresa que um, trabalhei noutra empresa que pronto, não correu muito bem como gerente de produção na, numa produção de morangos mas é mesmo assim a vida uh, quanto à vida pessoal tive o prazer de, de conhecer muita gente uh, tenho dois grandes grupos de amigos além de, de um grande amigo que é o, o Brian que é um DJ e de facto me facilitou a entrada em muitos festivais de verão uh, Acabei por ir de graça a grande parte deles. Continuei a praticar a minha modalidade, um, crossfit, que fazia em Portugal e, e portanto, continua a ser possível. E, de momento, tam também estou ligado, a, portanto, estou a aprender holandês, uh, infelizmente, teve de ser online, uh, pela Tal House. Aproveitei, durante grande parte do meu tempo, grande parte da minha estadia cá também para, para viajar, portanto, dentro da província, Uh, Rovmond, Maastricht, Venlo, Wirt, ou seja, a província de Limburgo, mas também fora da província, chegando a, ir a, a sítios mais longínquos como Crónica. Viajei também para a Alemanha, para, para a Bélgica. Penso que todos os fins de semana estou em, em sítios diferentes, que é mesmo assim. Portanto, prós e contras. Prós. Um, é mesmo curto assim, é oportunidades de carreira, é oportunidades de, de me desenvolver profissionalmente, porque de outra maneira em Portugal um, ainda estamos muito aquém, Portugal e, e países sul, sul da Europa uh, em desenvolvimento, em tecnologia, ficam muito aquém para já. Oportunidade para viajar e para experimentar outras vivências, uh, outras vivências falam pronto, de festividades, de festivais, de... é incrível porque estamos a falar de uma cultura muito riquíssima, e é, é um prazer poder partilhar a oportunidade também de autoconhecimento. De facto, uh, começo a chegar à conclusão que não me conhecia, se calhar, assim tão bem. Uh, o que é bom, mas muitas vezes também se torna um bocado assustador. Uh, quanto ao conforto financeiro, é possível ter algum conforto financeiro, especialmente se vierem acompanhados. Se não vierem acompanhados também, é possível terem uma vida perfeitamente normal, é possível viajarem, é possível... Uh, ele já está fora, não há qualquer problema quanto a isso. E, de facto, também a facilidade com o inglês, a facilidade de grande parte das empresas também começam já a não, não pedir o holandês, pedem só o inglês, o que, o que ajuda bastante. Quanto a contras, aqui, aqui é, pronto, pode ser um bocado controverso, mas, de facto, é consideravelmente mais difícil estabelecer e criar contactos, relações, tanto profissionais como pessoais, pelo simples facto de não estão a jogar em casa. E uh, é preciso, de facto, uh, ser ativo e procurar mais. Uh, outra questão é a solidão. Cuidado aqui com, uh, com as escolha dos vossos parceiros. Uh, não, não se atirem de cabeça, foi o que aconteceu comigo. E uh, muitas vezes é uh, bom se magoar porque não tem cá a família e não tem cá os amigos. Um, também gostaria de falar, que foi um ponto que me esqueci aqui, é a parte de, pronto, do encontrar casa e, ou encontrar apartamento, porque de facto há zonas que estão mesmo muito saturadas e uh, é preciso ter um bocado mais de paciência, mas é possível. Quanto a sugestões pessoais, uh, se puder um bocado mais em conta, encontrem mais, mais uh, eu vou mais para o legal, Jumbo e Aldi, porque são de facto os mais baratos e têm, uma, têm muita coisa, têm uh, todo o género de produtos que precisam e mesmo medicamentos, uh, os medicamentos pronto, que, uh, que são medicamentos do dia a dia, uh, encontram facilmente nessas superfícies. Quanto a comprar bicicleta? No início optei por, uh, por comprar na Decathlon. Uh, 
entre preferência e invista numa, numa, numa bicicleta nova, que é alguma coisa que vão usar no dia a dia, é alguma coisa que provavelmente se ficarem bom, vão usar durante muito tempo e é um bom investimento. Mas se optarem por escolher uma bicicleta usada, existe sempre a plataforma Marketplace ou em lojas de segunda mão que existem bastantes. Quanto a aprender holandês, um, existem algumas escolas presenciais, como a Guilherme Ducati, que é uma escola bastante conceituada na minha região. Uh, são baratas e presenciais, muitas vezes porque elas têm acordos com, a, com os municípios, o que facilita. Uh, mas, de facto, as presenciais têm um problema de terem longas filas de espera. Por exemplo, no meu caso, uh, eu cheguei a... a Cheguei-me a candidatar em, por volta de junho e o que me disseram foi boa sorte, talvez no início do próximo ano tenhas a oportunidade de, de participar. Então, acabei por optar por uma escola online. Existem muitas escolas online com grupos pequenos e muito boa qualidade de ensino. É um, um investimento a considerar. Se de facto querem ficar, é um bom investimento, mas cada nível custa cerca de 500 euros. Quanto a desporto ou outro hobby, recomendo pessoalmente e uh, mesmo que tenha algum género de trabalho laboral, alguma coisa que seja mais física, é possível fazer desporto. Acreditem que é possível. E uh, é um, um mais, é um lado para, para quem quer conhecer pessoas e quem quer aliviar a cabeça. E recomendo, pessoalmente. Quanto a apartamentos ou quartos, que é aqui uma questão que muitas vezes deixa o pessoal a tremer. Uh, tem plataformas pagas, como o Cantola Fundo e o Camarnet tem muitas plataformas pagas, ou se quiserem optar por, por algo livre, uh, tem o Marketplace e o Facebook. Aqui cuidado com os esquemas de phishing. Eles acontecem, aconteceu comigo e não é nada agradável. Quanto a emprego, além de Eures, uh, tem diversas plataformas, tem o Indeed, que é uma plataforma holandesa que, bem, contém lá tudo. Infelizmente está em holandês, mas existe, existe o, o trator. Uh, tem o LinkedIn. E aqui no LinkedIn, de facto, invistam muito tempo no LinkedIn, façam um bom, um, uma boa página, porque muitas empresas, especialmente empresas de grande calibre, primeiro veem o LinkedIn e veem a carta de motivação e só depois é que pensam se vão seguir com a pessoa. Quanto a sites particulares das empresas, empresas multinacionais fazem sempre uh, nos sites deles e... Uh, Muitas vezes eles dão um sinal no, no LinkedIn, mas procurem sempre, se, se querem uma empresa específica, procurem sempre no site deles. Tem outras, outras, outras plataformas mais pequenas, como o Green People, o Personato, uh, enfim, dáveis. Quanto a seguro, perguntem sempre à vossa empresa se oferece um seguro coletivo. Muitas vezes é mais barato, ou seja, vocês precisam de um, de um, de um seguro de trabalho e precisam de um seguro pessoal. Perguntem se eles oferecem um seguro uh, uh, pessoal porque mesmo com, com a ajuda, eles costumam ajudar com, com a papelada e é muito bom. Só optarem por fazer um seguro pessoal uh, por vocês mesmos, que eu, que eu já fiz, uh, é muito fácil. Uh, Dirigem-se à plataforma Independer, lá vocês podem comparar os seguros, comparar uh, o que é que de facto eles oferecem e uh, é possível tratar tudo por lá. Deixo aqui então o meu contacto, por acaso tem alguma, alguma questão, algum receio, ou caso queiram visitar a magnífica cidade de Rolomonte, uh, vemo-nos nos Países Baixos. Obrigado. Ora bem, muito, uh, já está o Francisco. Uh, thank you very much for the presentations of, uh, from Kim and uh, um, Francisco. It was amazing. <laughs> amazing. I really like it. And now I think my colleague Nidia already uh, gave permission for um, the micros and the cameras. So, uh, wants to ask questions, please uh, ask questions. Raise your hand. You have the 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 hand on the top of the of your screen raise your hand so that you can uh, ask questions to uh, kim peter eric and francisco you are welcome to do that uh, we have already uh, katerina katerina gomes you can uh, turn your yeah yeah hello good morning everyone thank you so much for this presentation actually I'm trying to move to the Netherlands in March and I'm already trying to learn Dutch 
And I would love to know more about the 30% ruling that I know that's something that some Portuguese citizens can apply for if they are um, hired before they go to the Netherlands. And supposedly 30% of our salary will not be taxated. Is that correct? There's some more information that I'm supposed to know before applying to that. I would love to more, uh, know more. Thank you. And uh, uh, Yakim or Peter, you want to to answer or Eric? Uh, Peter, I think uh, it's difficult to answer because it's very customized. Uh, I think you're talking about the target mobility schemes and we also know it in Portugal. Uh, do you think the same, uh, Peter? I ask you because you're the most no, experienced it's, it's one. a different scheme. <laughs> The 30% rule, but it and generally doesn't apply. But maybe it's best if you write to us an email and we will uh, check out what's, what the possibilities are or not, because it's not as easy as it looks. Yeah, you, you just contact us, write an email. Yeah, I will. Thank you. Yeah, OK. You have already uh, the, the email on, on the chat. Uh, now I think is Marla, Marla uh, Eli. Yeah, you can uh, speak, Marla, and the others can put the um, the hand. Yes, good morning. The floor is uh, sorry. <laughs> I just would you like to know if it's possible to apply uh, for the job in Netherlands. Uh, work in Portugal, like a remote. If it's possible, work here uh, from here and just some company from there. Yeah, it depends on the job. If you are a nurse, it's difficult to do remote working. So, so it depends <laughs> on uh, on which kind of job you you want to do. But uh, yeah, it's getting more and more the the, um, the remote jobs. Most more employers about the call center, something like this. Most employers who are going to reach us here in the Netherlands, they want you to come here and then you have a home and you can also do remote working because today I'm sitting at home also. It's very normal in the Netherlands, but it's not very often they go to us to uh, seek for job seekers who wants to stay in Portugal. But it, it's possible when we go to look for it. I think it's possible because sometimes they, they need only the language uh, with customer service something. You can do it from your home. So. Uh, yeah, we have to see your CV and we have to talk with you a bit more, I think. If you want, you can also Thank ask you. questions to, to Francisco if you want. Now I think it's Sandra Candid who want to speak. The floor is yours, Sandra. Sandra? Uh, yes, good morning. Uh, good morning. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, so I would like to know if uh, in the healthcare system, if you want to work, uh, do you need a special um, test or you have to, to, to do something regard the, you know, the, uh, the way for, for, for doing that? Because, for instance, in England, you have to, you have, to have um, a proper test to, to work there. So I would like to know if in Netherlands it's the same or... I can answer that. Uh, I can answer it if you want, because our Dutch employers from healthcare, they have many ways to compare uh, the diplomas. So uh, you don't have to worry about it. They are going to look what did you do and what's what's possible. Do you do you have to take a test? OK, then we talk with you about it. But sometimes it's not necessary but because they know what uh, the education is in Portugal because they have more Portuguese people in the Dutch hospitals and nurse, nurses and caregivers and something like that. So it's not a, okay. a standard test or something, no. Okay, and you have to ha have a, a register in, in some uh, government to, to work in the healthcare system? Yes, that, that's what you uh, have to have, yes, of course, but you also have need it in Portugal. Uh, so. Um, I think that's that's not nothing different from your country. Peter, do you want to add something? No, because it's complete. We yeah, we have we have a registration system where you can register as a nurse and then work um, in the Netherlands. So 
Yeah. And we yeah. we have special people in our team who who only do the only have contacts with healthcare uh, organizations. So that are the people uh, who, who are you go, you're going to be in contact with then. And they are the real professionals because I'm from tourism and Peter is uh, knows a lot of techniques. It's everybody has his own profession. Now okay. we have uh, Anna Maria. Thank uh, you. Sorry, sorry. Anna Maria Mota, I believe we have also uh, some uh, one questions, please. Um, sorry, can you hear me? Yeah, yes. perfectly. Okay, okay. Um, my question is, uh, is it normal for companies or for agencies to support um, new employers, um, employees um, when moving, for example, for money, for rent, and just until the first salary? Because I, I think that's important. It feels like moving will be a costly thing. Um, yeah, we have we have some schemes that target mobility schemes, which which uh, support you the 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 move and when you go for a, a job interview. So, but it's always advisable to have some savings to to okay. because you have to pay double rent the first month. So the, the the when you come to the Netherlands, have some savings because the first few months are more expensive than uh, mm -hmm. than the rest. Yeah. Any idea how much, more or less? Um, yes, so the rent can be double, so and that will be the biggest part. So and um, you have to move. Maybe you have, some... maybe you have to ask Francisco because he did it. <laughs> so yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How much um, money did you got? <laughs> Sorry. Can I, can I make also, that question again? Um. Do you they want are, to repeat the question? Can you, can you repeat the question? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, Francisco. Okay. Um, yeah. So, okay. So I'm asking um, because I would like to move to the Netherlands and find a job there. But how much should I have in savings to more or less to do this moving? Well, because I would say I would say uh, to be comfortable uh, between four and eight uh, thousand. I think that's that's okay. you know, yeah. Okay. If 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 you plan things well, uh, five thousand are more than enough. More than enough. Okay. Thank you, Francisco. Now we have Susana Isabel Pinheiro. You can turn your your camera, and you can speak. Yeah. Hi. Go go <laughs> Hi, ahead. Anna. Hi. Uh, uh, I would like to, uh, I already lived in Netherlands and uh, I work in, live in Netherlands. My husband is in Netherlands now, <laughs> so I kind of know some things. And I would like to give a tip to learn in uh, Netherlands. Uh, I was in the south of Netherlands, in Vlissingen, and to learn, uh, they are in schools, in kids' schools, they are always volunteers to, to give some lessons of uh, Netherlands. So I think it's important to know also uh, because the language really really is very important because yes 90 percent of the populations uh, uh, speak english but sometimes they don't want to speak english and they want you to know netherland so <laughs> it's very nice very nice people i love netherland and i always thinking about coming back uh but it is what it is. We're not in our country and uh, it's reality. It's nice, but <laughs> you have to learn the language. That's, that is the truth. That's why you go there also. Uh, and I would like to know also if uh, in human resources, because I already have my bachelor degree, uh, is, it, uh, is there any, uh, just like in nursing, nursing there is a lot of opportunities also, uh, always and human resources is there uh, some things uh, some companies maybe internet uh, um. yeah that's a very specific question because what what it is with human resources in an international company you're when you speak english it's it's 
probably okay. Yes, if it's yes. medium and small companies, it will be in Dutch. So exactly. and, and the human resource is very communication based. There are some cultural issues. So I, I in international companies, no problem. But when I when you see uh, a Dutch company or medium and, and small, it's I think it's it's more difficult. Yes, that it's my problem. I have to learn better that. <laughs> yeah. That's no doubt. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank, thank you, Susana. Now we have uh, João Fernandes. João Fernandes, you can uh, turn on your, your camera and micro. Hi. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. It's in the Netherlands. It's easy for a student to work. So study and work in the same time. Yeah, a lot of students do that. My sons <laughs> do the same. So yeah, yeah. But you, yeah, yeah. There's no problem at all. Because I'm I'm thinking to next year to to study in Netherlands, and I also want to work, of course. Yeah. Yes, absolutely possible. There's actually uh, companies that uh, a lot of companies that prefer like a part-time job than a full-time job. So, uh, oh, okay. yeah, I'd say that you have a lot of chance. Yes, okay. and Jao, uh, to add something, there are also a lot of online marketing. Uh, it may be for a first job. It can be interesting. You can talk sometimes even in your own language and then you can study because that are uh, a lot of part-time part, part -time jobs. So maybe. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Now we have also Vadim Ryabsev. If you want to turn your camera, please. Sorry, I don't have any cameras. This oh, is not okay. COVID PC. Um, okay, no problem. But uh, I you want to ask you uh, some question about um, internship. For example, uh, after study in uh, EFPIM, uh, I can find some internship in Netherlands. You want to ask us if there are internships or that's your question? Yes, 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 in Netherlands. Yes. Yes, there are internships, uh, of course. Uh, most of the companies have paid jobs, but uh, an internship is, is like a stage, eh, Peter? That, that's what he means, or not? Yes, yes. I think that's, so. We are um, we are doing a lot of effort now to also because we know it. That's there is in the Netherlands a lot of, but they were not the first employers to come to us because we have paid jobs and people do want to earn money right away. But internships okay. also possible. Uh, because, for example, in Portugal we have normally, I think, nine uh, nine months of internship in, uh, for, for example, some company. Uh, and, uh, for example, if I make course uh, here in EFP, uh, I can find something uh, in Netherlands. You are asking? It's a question? Yeah, okay. Him. Yes, I think you mean... Um... Uh, I, sorry, I have to talk with my colleague Peter. I think that he bedoelt, weet je wel, als je net begint na je studie, dat je dus uh, opgeleid kan worden. Hoe yeah. heet de naam? Uh, sorry, it was in Dutch. Uh, not sta stage. <laughs> no it, it, okay. It's another word. But I, I know what you mean, and it's also possible in the Netherlands because it's a junior position. When you come, mm. then you can learn for a year or nine months, and that's what you mean, I think. And that's that's very, uh, for example, in big companies, that's very normal to have also these positions. But then okay. we have to know what you're looking for, what kind of companies, and then we can uh, can look yeah. for you. Send us your CV, and we will uh, <laughs> we'll look it up. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And I believe we have also questions in the chat. You saw already them, Susanna. Yeah, uh, yes. Do you want me to go through them? Yeah. Please. Can you help me with that, yes. please? Yes. Yes. So um, I had a question from David Silva Santos. He asked uh, if you could better explain the program for the area of assistance to health and the elderly population. I think it was something you mentioned in the presentation. Maybe give a little bit more detail. Yeah, maybe it is. It's very um, narrow, so it has to be relevant for for everybody. If we talk now a lot about healthcare, maybe it's better to do that in a one on one session if if, uh, if because there are not only healthcare people here, and if we talk about it a long time, so maybe it's better to get one-on-one. -on -one. 
Okay, so uh, most most questions are in fact the most questions yes. that the candidates put yeah. on the chat are uh, these kinds of questions, okay. especially in this or that area because it's their area and they are trying to take advantage of the um, of the yeah. session. So what I can uh, suggest is that you use uh, the email that our colleagues and myself are also uh, repeated on the chat and send your CV write uh, a little bit what kind of um, advice you are looking for and yeah. um, our Dutch colleagues will be more than happy to help you. Yeah. Is this I think the that's best a way good to idea. go? Yeah, I, I think so. We have only but one. We have Jan, sorry. No, no Peter, okay. Now it's only uh, another one. Uh, Danielle, I think now he wants to ask some, mm -hmm. something. Yes, can you read me? Can you? Yeah, yes. perfectly, yes. perfectly. Uh, I study in EFP ever. And uh, 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 one day I like working in Netherlands. Uh, if a po possibility um, finish my my study and 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 go to Netherlands uh, mm, working in the one job training of my course or no? Hi. Não percebo muito bem a. Também. A I did not also. Well, look in português. Não, em português, em português. Pode, posso falar em português? Pronto. Pode, pode ser. Pode ser. Uh, é assim, eu estou a estagiar no IFP Débora, uh, estou a tirar um curso de estruturas aeronáuticas e queria saber se há possibilidades, depois de acabar este curso, estagiar numa empresa holandesa que é a FOCA, que a traz Foca? vários componentes de material aeronáutico. Eu não sei se o FOCA ainda. Tá, mas podemos Sim. ver, porque em Schiphol tem, tem, tem muita coisa para a aeronáutica e talvez também a indústria à volta de Schiphol também tem. E, então, mando o seu CV e podemos ver uh, as possibilidades. Ok. Sim, okay. Peter, posso okay. sugerir ao Daniel, se ele tiver dificuldade em colocar a sua questão em inglês, que o faça em português e se dirija diretamente ao Peter? Sim. Mas ah, aquilo, olha, temos agora uh, 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 a dificuldade uh, vai ser, uh, porque é preciso falar inglês muito bem, que, que quer fazer ah. um, um estágio em aeronáutica, yeah. a língua, uh, mas talvez o inglês em língua técnica do Daniel é, talvez é melhor que assim o yes, 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 yes. Ok, muito <laughs> bem. Peter, and, and we can, you can give your yes. email address. Uh, of course. Also, yeah, of course. No and, problem. We so have no more questions on the chat, Ana Paula. On the chat, and here we have uh, Edgar Marques with the, the hand raised. You can uh, speak. Edgar, are you there? <laughs> uh, you don't have sound, Edgar. Turn on your micro, please. Not yet. <laughs> the symbol, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Legal says no, but I I estou a ver we que não está o, o simbol do do também não estou a ver. Não. Estava arriscado, Nídia. Tinha o micro arriscado. Agora não tem, mas. It's on. You can, can try. You speak, Edgar, can Edgar you speak? try. Okay. Há mais oh. perguntas? Há mais questions? I'll see you with Gar Perekel till we enter. Yeah. Uh, nevertheless, the session is already yeah. one hour and 20 minutes yeah. almost. Maybe yeah. um, we can. Oh, oh, still one question from David. We can try. Okay. And that guy is here again. Okay, and that guy is here again. Yeah. yeah. And we finish them. Yeah. Okay. So we finish these two more and then we close the session. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. David, please. David and uh, after Edgar, go. <laughs> go. <laughs> and, uh, my question is about, uh, I have working in seven years in London and I, I've done the maintenance of the London Underground and then in a rail network like Welder. And uh, I have experience in the network and uh, engineer. And I have taken a, a few certificates there in the London Northern Northwest uh, College. 
and a few tickets is necessary therefore to uh, do this job. And my question is, if I go to, or if I find a job similar in uh, Netherlands, uh, I need to take all these tickets again and certification, or I can use this certification there, or, or I don't know, you, you know, if he's... Uh, I think possible. maybe, I don't, I, I'm not sure what usually is when the, the certifications are uh, kind of European, it's okay, and maybe they will do you, let you do a test to see how your welding is. But uh, it depends a little bit on what it is. If if it's if it's uh, uh, a welding which is um, on pressure uh, uh, things and so on, I think they will they will uh, have to you will have to take a, a, a test. But if it's on railways and it's more the 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 the, the, the um, coarser way of welding, I don't think it's necessary. So it depends a little bit on. On what what you are going to weld. So if you send send me your CV again and your the certificate, yeah. and what kind of welding you want to do, I can check with companies um, how they. Um, Maybe I can make me MMA TIG, you know, obviously yeah. cutting uh, and these are right. But uh, my question is this: uh, I I send my CV for you, and after uh, my my question is go more for. What I'm looking for is the access to the right agencies for apply for this type of job. Mm -hmm. is I can bring you in contact. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you, Peter. Okay. Okay, Bye. welcome. Thank you. We, and we have the final questions for Edgar, at least. Edgar, are you there? Uh, hello. Good. Good. Yeah, it's okay now. <laughs> okay, perfect. So uh, first, I want to say thank you for the presentation, and uh, I have uh, uh, two questions. One is about the res uh, registration, uh, because uh, I'm already looking for a job in the Netherlands. Uh, I want to, to live uh, there. And uh, supposedly the company can uh, provide housing, uh, but if the company can't uh, uh, give me housing. Um, I would like to know if it if it's possible to register uh, if uh, I'm staying uh, on a hotel. If your question is that can you have a social security number before you have a fixed address, the answer is yes, you can. Okay. You have uh, you have to register on a certain place, and then you can have without a fixed address. You can uh, you can um, you can register. So if if you send us an email, I will I will give you the information. We can give you the information where you have to register, how you do it, etc. Yeah. Okay. The, because um, I have talked uh, with an hotel, and uh, that was my uh, my. Um, my question, because uh, if it's yeah. uh, it's temporary and yeah, uh, it's temporary. You can't. You, I think it's maximum three months. Uh, the hotel allowed me to stay five months. Oh. Yeah, but if you have uh, uh, that number, yeah. Okay, and my second question question is um, here in Portugal. I did a professional course, uh, electromechanics, and. Uh, I would like to know the equivalent in the Netherlands, if if it's uh, HBO or MBO. Yeah, it depends. I have to see your uh, your uh, courses and your CV, then I can see. Okay. Uh, we are starting in next year a very interesting project, also where you can learn and and uh, work together in the energy transition. Okay. So if you send me an email. <laughs> okay, uh, thanks. Yeah, okay, you're welcome. Oh, uh, uh, I'm, yeah. uh, just uh, an information, I'm already um, learning the Dutch language. Ah, heel goed, heel Perfect. goed. Very good, very good. I, we will... Uh, sorry, and Sa Francisco was uh, telling something with his fingers yes. about the uh, number I of months. Francisco, please, can you uh, clarify? So I exactly. think Francisco uh, wants to help. What happened in my situation was 
I find a pe fund a pension, and then uh, I registered myself as um, with a temporary li license four months, and then after you have a, a physical address, only after you have the address, uh, the contract, everything, you can actually require a permanent license, so stay longer than than four months. But yeah. If you, if, you, you, stay, if, you yeah. stay, if you stay in that hotel, of course, you need like a, a, a non-permanent and then after having your address. Uh, thank you very much, Francisco. And as we said in the beginning, we will send you all the information and all the presentations. And was Francisco was so uh, so um, nice enough to uh, give uh, their contact, this contact, a email address and LinkedIn, so everybody will be able to get in touch with uh, with all of us and our uh, fantastic Dutch team. <laughs> Here is the uh, Dutch team. Susanna, I, I, are you there? So yeah. I think for the moment, I don't know if uh, we thank you very much to be here. It was very good for us also. And uh, I think we finished here. What do you think? Nidia and Susanna, Peter, Eric, uh, Kim, Francisco, please. <clears throat> Last words. <laughs> yes, I think I, uh, we will finish just uh, to say to Edgar that uh, uh, you just have to send your email to work in the Netherlands. Um, at at uh, yeah. who WV. And L. Um, yes. uh, we wrote you, that uh, email several times to... in the chat. Yeah. 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 Okay. It is in the chat, and also the presentations we'll have, and you know all our our time. names. You can all the time direct to one person that goes. Though this is the team, a big team. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Goodbye. Welcome Thank you for home. having. Bye. Yes. Thank you. Obrigada, obrigada. Obrigada. Thank you. Bye, thank you. Bye, bye. Thank you, bye. Bye. Bye, bye. Bye, thank you. Thank you. Bye, thank you. Not the team, Peter already gone. Leaving, yeah. I think when Peter has time, he stays, I think. He's, he's, I will stay. I will yeah. stay. He's also, yeah. yeah, yeah. Ah, okay, okay. Oh, I, I was, I was yeah. scared because I saw it was not there. Obrigada a todos. Agora pedimos que uh, abandonem uh, a sessão. Okay, obrigado. Obrigada. Muito obrigada. Muito obrigada.